to see everyone out this morning receive from the Lord's word and sacrament. If you have the announcement sheet, ask you to please take it out for some brief announcements. As you are so doing, I ask you to please fill out the blue book at the end of the pew and pass it on down, return it back to its spot. Um, as you can see here for the bulletin, pretty straightforward, a very simple week here. We're kind of in that transition period between the uh, spring schedule and summer schedule. With that in mind, I do want to draw special attention to next week. So next Wednesday, May 29th, is when we start our summer divine services as well as summer confirmation. Uh, real briefly on that, with the summer confirmation, that's for those who have makeup work to do, basically from confirmation that did not get done. We do makeup uh, confirmation through the summer months. That starts at 5 o'clock, and the divine service starts at 6 o'clock every Wednesday. With that in mind, our Wednesday divine services, uh, they're a full service. We have accompanists, so forth, everything uh, for that communion. And so consider that. If you're going to be traveling on the weekend, consider coming out to that service. Uh, typically anywhere from anywhere from 18 to 30 people that attend that so keep that in mind as an option throughout the summer months as it oftentimes gets very busy with that in mind is there any other announcements that I may have missed or overlooked that need to be mentioned at this time well this morning you can see with the pyramids they are red which is the uh, day of Pentecost and so we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 2 as well as uh, the story of the Tower of Babel from Genesis 11 that's what we're going to hear about in the sermon today uh, but before we do start so opening hymn of invocation is hymn number 913, hymn number 913. congregation to please stand as we turn to the top of page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 
Amen. <laughs> Love in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all of my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by the virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the intro. I printed on the inside of your bulletin, sung to the tune of C.
God on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the day of Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words, and as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top to the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they all have one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down, and there confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because, the, because, the, because, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them, and rested on each of one, and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under heaven, and at the sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia. For, 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 excuse me, for, for Guia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. I give ear to my words, for these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. According to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus. 
Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the words that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of the world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. With one heart to one voice, we confess the holy faith as expressed in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 191. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being a one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the hymn today, hymn number 497, hymn number 497.
love Jesus. Amen. We Christians, yes, we Christians, have this tendency to look at the plans of the ungodly world and then quickly jump to despair. Yes, one more time. We have the tendency to look at the plans of the ungodly world that we find ourselves in, and then we quickly jump to despair. In other words, when we look at all the evil in the world, as well as all the grandiose plans of the world, we can easily conclude that the church is about to go to ruin, and that ungodliness, yes, ungodliness is about to take over everything. We can say to one another, I've never seen it this bad before. Indeed, I've never seen it this bad before. Or we can say things like this, it is getting really bad out there. I worry for my grandchildren. Now, dear friends, we Christians indeed look at the world with its evil plans and can be easily given to doom and gloom. We can actually look out in the American church and see the empty pews. We can hear the great plans of the world and we can see the rampant evil in the world and conclude that everything is well that everything's going to hell in a handbasket, as they say. Now, contrary, contrary to what you might think, though, the Old Testament reading from Genesis chapter 11, the Old Testament lesson that we read this morning, it actually serves as a rebuke to our frantic lack of faith. Yes, our Old Testament lesson shows us that there is nothing new under the sun. Yes, nothing new under the sun. Furthermore, the Old Testament lesson from this morning, that reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 11, gives us a glimpse into the realm of the world, how the world thinks, how the world plans, how the world operates. And so we get a glimpse into the world and realize, well, there, that there's, well, that there's nothing new. We realize that there's nothing new. There have always been times like these. Consider Genesis 11 one more time, that Tower of Babel. As we read, mankind had gathered together in the land of Shinar. There at that place, they planned to build for themselves a city and a tower. A tower that reached the heavens. Nothing small, something grandiose, something big. It was a tower and a city to make them famous so that they would not scatter across the earth. Now, it's important for you and me to slow down. It is important for you and me to slow down at this point and really consider what's going on with Genesis chapter 11. Consider the words of the people of the land of Shinar one more time and listen very carefully. Yes, indeed, listen very carefully. Do not let this slip by. Come, let us build ourselves a city and tower. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the earth. Now, did you hear it? Did you hear their pride? Yes, did you hear their pride? Let us make a name for ourselves. Did you hear their fear? Did you hear their fear? Lest we be dispersed over the face of the earth. Did you hear their supposed hope? Let us build ourselves a city and a tower that reaches to the heavens. My dear friends, we must remember that the world that the world that we find ourselves in is made up of people just like you and me. In other words, we believe, yes, we believe, we believe the myth all too often that the world's powers are somewhat organized and confident and in control and secure, but they're not. That is the great myth, they are not. The world and its rulers are full of pride and fear and have misguided views of hope. You see, when the world has tiny successes, the world, well, becomes puffed up, thinking that it has taken the place of God, it's God himself. And then with great self-reliance, the world will have the audacity, yes, the audacity to think that it can do anything it pleases. Thus, the world becomes blinded by pride as it looks inward to its own accomplishments and so-called power. Let us make a name for ourselves. Now, dear Christians, dear Christians, you must guard yourselves from being tempted to believe in the world's greatness. Do not be so easily deceived into believing that the master plans of the world, as if the world has it all together, as if the world has the corner market on being all-knowing, all-present, and all-powerful. The world itself is not omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. Indeed, it is important to keep in mind 
But it is not simple, though, to build towers and build dams, reroute water, and all these other great architectural accomplishments. But it is certainly simple, and this is the point, it is certainly simple to do these things if we do not make, if we do them to make, yes, they are simple, if we do them to make, to make a name for ourselves while thinking that we have somehow tamed nature, secured greatness for ourselves, and taken the place of God himself. You see, when the world reaches the pinnacle of its pride, the world will typically scorn the church. It always happens. When the world reaches the pinnacle of its pride, the world will scorn the church as irrelevant and weak and foolish. But truth be told, the reason why the world often despises the church is that it, the world itself is afraid. Yes, the world is afraid, and the church is a reminder of God himself and how tiny the world really is. So, dear Christians, hear this loud and clear. While the world, <clears throat> while the world will operate with robust pride, while the world is also very afraid at the same time, while all this happens, consider all of this as a perspective. Again, consider the Tower of Babel. Consider the Tower of Babel as we contemplate our present time. The Tower of Babel, again, they had great confidence that they were going to build a tower to the top of the skies. They were going to make a name for themselves, make their name great. And the reason why? Again, they were afraid. They were afraid of being scattered. And this is how the ungodly world has always operated. On one side of the mouth, well, the world has huge plans. Plans of greatness that are ultimately driven by, well, on the other side, the world's fear. Just like you and me, the world has its shares of fear and hope. However, even though we fear as Christians, our hope will ultimately prevail in Christ, whereas the hope of the world will ultimately fail and give way to what they fear most. And so right about now, you may be saying to yourself, Pastor Richard, this does not sound too encouraging right now. It certainly is not too encouraging to hear. Ah, but dear Christians, it is. You see, what we're learning from the Tower of Babel this morning is that the world, back then, way back then, at the very beginning, functioned with pride and fear and misplaced hope. And it is actually no different than today. It is no different than right now. Indeed, as we look at the people of Babel, we see that they too had tremendous fear that was covered by smug arrogance and driven by false hope. And today it is the same as well. In the world today, there is nothing new to see. As Solomon says in the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes there is nothing new under the sun. And so, baptized saints, do you see the world's pride? Yes, we do. Do you see the world's fear? Yes, when we look closely, we do. Do you see the world's false hope? When you look closely, yes, you do. Is this new? No, it's not. It has always been this way with the world. And it will continue to be, with this, be this way with the world until Christ comes back at the great eschaton, the second coming to make things anew. And so, baptized saints, let this be a comfort to you. Our Lord God not only sees the plans and the pride and the evil and the mischief of the world, but Scripture says that he, well, actually laughs. He laughs at the futile plans of the world, according to Psalm 2.4. In fact, as we heard in Genesis 11, the Lord God is the one that actually came down to the Tower of Babel in the midst of their grandiose plans, in the midst of their pride, in the midst of all that they were going on in the Tower of Babel. It's the Lord God himself who came down and opposed them and confused their, lang confused their language. And so, the point being, do not be frightened when you see the world enacting all of its plans. Indeed, do not be afraid. And do not be discouraged if the church is persecuted by the world, for the Lord is in control. He laughs at the world's silly pride, the Lord God does, and will not only confound the world, but will certainly sustain you, his church. Indeed, the Lord sees what the ungodly are doing and sees his precious saints in the holy ark of the Christian church. The Lord God, he is in control, and he will sustain you through this veil of tears to the very end. Never forget, 
Yes, never forget, the Lord God sustained Noah and his family through the great cleansing of the mighty flood. He kept the Israelites through the great persecution of the Egyptian nation, and he will sustain you, the church, amid the towers of Babel that are built around us this day. With the Lord God's divine providence, he may tear these towers down in our day and age, or he may not. He may choose to confuse the plans of the world again, or he may hold off for a time being. However, one thing is for sure, he will sustain you and me through his clear word and assuring sacraments in this chaotic world full of noise and distractions. Consider for a moment briefly, though, too, our second reading from the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, many people had gathered together, as we heard, in Jerusalem. As they gathered from many nations, they had many different languages. And yet the Lord God undid that curse of Babel. You see, he gave the disciples the ability to speak the gospel in foreign tongues so that all would know the saving work of Christ crucified. And so right there in Acts chapter 2, on that Pentecost day that we celebrate today, the Lord God broke through the language curse of Babel. He broke through the language curse of Babel to sustain his church with the saving message of the gospel. The Lord God did not disperse his church or confuse his church, but he gave his church something better than a tower. He delivered the message of Christ, Christ bloodied on the cross. Christ risen from the grave, Christ who defeated death and hell and sin itself. And so right now, in this sanctuary, in this place, in this time, as the world around us makes its plans with pride, as the world around us reacts with fear, while trying to convince itself with supposed hope, you, the church, you, the church, you as his blessed baptized saints hear the word the clear word of god this day hear this simple message this simple message for you from christ himself peace i leave with you my peace i give to you not as the world gives do i give to you let not your hearts be troubled neither let them be afraid in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ask the congregation to please stand for the offertory. to please be seated for the offering music. As a way of reminder, the offering pages at the back of the sanctuary, offerings can be mailed to the church office or conducted through the church website online.
Pastor Congregation, to please stand for the prayers of the church. Gracious Lord, your spirit fills the world with gladness, with gladness, your church, gladdens your church with the remembrance of all Christ Jesus has spoken. Comfort us with divine peace and do not let our hearts be troubled or afraid. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you bless the earth to make it fruitful, bringing forth in abundance whatever is needed for the support of our lives. Prosper the work of farmers and all those who labor to bring food to our tables. Grant them, see, grant them seasonable weather that they may gather in the fruits of the earth in abundance and proclaim your goodness with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, give your sons peace. We pray to Arlene, Aspen, Brian, Kari, Carl, Charlotte, Deb, Fern, Gail, Gordy, Jeff, Jim, Joellen, Josh, Callie, Kim, Marvin, Megan, Marilyn, Mark, Miles, Pastor Jinx, Philip, Randy, Roger, Ruth, Shirley, and Travis, and all who suffer in body and mind in our midst, do not let their hearts be troubled or afraid. Grant them health and healing in accordance with your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, send... Almighty Father, with your Son, Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts through your word to rule and govern us according to your will. Comfort us in every temptation and misfortune, and defend us against every error, that we may continue steadfast in the faith, increase in us love and good works, and trusting firmly in your grace for us by his death, obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we continue to the service of the sacrament on page 194, we continue in repentance and faith to receive the gifts the Lord has for us in his body and blood given and shed for us. If you're not a member of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, we do still invite you to please come forward, kneel at the rail, and cross your arms to receive a blessing this morning. And if you'd like to partake of this wonderful gift of the altar, please talk to me after the service about membership here at St. Paul's. We continue on 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and at all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the he heavens and sitting at your right hand, poured out on us this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. For all this, the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. in his promises were bold to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Our Lord. 
Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, and remember some me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
permission to please stand as we sing the Nunc Dimittis on page 199. to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this solitary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Congregation may be seen for departing him, hymn number 500.
depart today, hear those words of Jesus from John chapter 14. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Christ is your victor, Christ is your stead, Christ is your assurance to stay. Amen.